So I, I, uh, I ask you, and I, I'd like to ask you here to, to talk about uh, what's, and I know you get hands on in putting mm -hmm. together the team. I mean, that, that's, you're, you're famous for that. Mm -hmm. The being in there early on uh, as an early investor and helping uh, take a, a raw founding team and or a group and turning it into a, 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 a lean, mean fighting machine. Right. So what skills do you look for and uh, behaviors, uh, these, what patterns have you seen over the years? And if you have an example or so to share, it, that'd be great. Okay. In fact, let, let me add to that and say it's the people, but more than people, it's the team. You know, Quantum Perkins is some really great people, but I guarantee you none of us would be half as effective um, and half as being generous if we had to operate independently. We learn, even today, so much from each other. And most people who know us say most of the partners have very different backgrounds and points of view, personalities, approaches, but it's from that uh, disparity, that difference, that all our strength comes because we look at all points of view. That speaks to this issue of people. Uh, let me start with just uh, maybe two examples. Uh, when Sun was started, since Tom referred to Sun, I ran into Andy Becklesheim, who's a graduate student at Margaret Jacks Hall in computer science. And the first thing he did, since he was in the middle of his PhD, was say to me, I'll license you the technology. Right? And I said to him, not interested. By the way, six other companies had licensed the technology from him. And I said, I want the goose that laid the golden egg, not the golden egg. You know, that's a one-time thing. And I offered him half the equity, an equal share to me in the company, when I could have bought the license for $10,000. That was the price he was asking for. Uh, so people are important, and it's the only reason Sun is around today. Because I got Andy to join me instead of saying, the opportunistic and economic thing to do was get a license. Um, let me give you another example. Um, Juniper is a company that we helped incubate. When Pradeep Sindhu first came to me, he actually wasn't building routers for the internet. Um, he actually came to me with an algorithm to minimize the cost of memory in router architectures. It's a fairly detailed technical argument. And I said, that's not the problem. The problem is the internet. And Cisco and others aren't building routers for the internet. And if I have time, I'll come back to talking about how belief systems also play a really important role. Um, if you remind me, if mm -hmm. I don't forget. Uh, I talk too much and forget I'm, what I'm supposed to say. But I said, let's build a solution for the internet that has nothing to do with, and maybe we can leverage this memory architecture and this algorithm. Uh, but let's build a build a purpose-built router for the internet. But before we can do that, you have no idea what to do. You can come up with algorithms and computer architectures. So I said, let's go engineer the gene pool. This is also a concept uh, that the Harvard Business Review article talks about. That's also, uh, should be in my entrepreneurial roller coaster talk. Uh, and I said, let's look at all the possible things we don't know about building internet routers. Not what we know, but what we don't know. And let's get experts in each of those areas. Turned out, you know, most of our competitors started the way we did. The founders found more people they knew who were really as good as them in the areas they were good at. Left the other parts of the chain as weak links. We said, we know nothing about protocol stacks. Right? We need a co-founder who knows protocol stack. We know nothing about running a network. Right? So we actually explicitly said, let's find all the companies that have run networks. So we, we listed about five areas of expertise we didn't have or that were critical to building an internet router. And we said, who are the companies that they do well at these five, in these five areas? Then within each company, for e we had like four or five companies in each area. We had four or five names within each company. And that became our recruiting hit list. Yeah. 
engineering the gene pool to make sure that all the weaknesses are accounted for and we have expertise. Because founding teams generally look at who they know as opposed to what they're missing, what their liabilities are. Um, that was sort of an example of engineering the gene pool. So we got somebody, Dennis Ferguson, who had been part of ANS and had run an IP network. And he brought so much perspective, and to this day, he's a key participant. He wasn't part of what Pradeep came to me with, but came out of this process of engineering the gene pool. People are very important. The other piece is to make people work together as a team. Kleiner Perkins is a team. Right? No one of us could do half as good. Same is true of Juniper. Same is true of every other company that's been successful. So um, unfortunately, and I have to warn you, most people agree people are important. Very few people are willing to pay the price to get the right people. And that's the real test. I'd say 90% of the people who say people are important will not make the right trade-offs. Because they're tough trade-offs. 